Internet. Welcome to the Intuitive Websites Internet Marketing Podcast, bringing you the country's top podcast on the subject of Internet marketing. I'm your host, Glenn Thayer, and welcome back to part two of Driving Traffic to Your Website. I'm here with the CEO of Intuitive Websites, Thomas Young, and Internet Marketing Specialist, Dennis McCarthy. Webinars are a great way to process new information, and Dennis, I know you've been doing a lot of those lately. I love webinars because uh, every website needs to have a way of establishing a relationship. You got a picture of the web visitor who's new to your website. They're kind of sort of interested, but they got 27 other things they're doing at the exact same time that they're cruising your website, and um, if they leave, you will never hear from them again. They're gone. They're gone forever. Uh, a webinar offers a way for them to extend their interest just a little bit so you can get them to sit through 45 minutes or an hour where you're showing them your solutions and you're showing them how they can how you can help them. A webinar is a great low-risk way for them to do it. And uh, I recommend that people do a free one and uh, that people also um, have fee-based webinars if, if that's appropriate for their market. But the free one's great. It's just a great way of getting people to make that little commitment on the website. And uh, I've gotten to the point where if I see a hot sales lead coming in for a client, I will set up a webinar for later that same day or the following morning, and I'd schedule it just for that hot sales lead. If a couple other people straggle in, great. Now, would you suggest doing a shorter webinar for your free webinar? Uh, yeah, people don't really have an attention span much greater than an hour is actually too long. But again, like what it, with everything else we're saying, it has to be valuable. It has to solve their problems. Because if you can give them 15 minutes of great content, they will sign up for a fee-based webinar. I think longer than 15 minutes because the value perception. Well, no, what I'm talking about is your free one. Your free, here, check this out. This is what you can expect from a longer yeah, and that's from another our, from our longer That's programs. another strategy. You have the free one lead into the, the, the fee-based one. But webinars are great. They're inexpensive. Uh, people ask what sort of technology to use. I, I really like GoToWebinar. It's uh, 99 bucks a month for as many as you could possibly do. And it handles all the scheduling and the registrations. All you have to do is link to it from your website. It handles all the reminders and the follow-ups and the surveys. There are probably better platforms out there, but you know something like WebEx, but they cost sometimes 10 times as much. How, nope. many, how many users can, can log in on GoToWebinar? I think the limit is something ridiculous, like ten thousand for ninety-nine bucks a month. Yeah, yeah, it's very robust. Now, what about on-demand webinars? Uh, go to webinar does that same thing, where you can have an instant meeting. And really, there's no difference between a webinar and a meeting. And go to meeting and go to webinar are ultimately the same product, with go to webinar including all that cool registration stuff. How can they afford to do that with with how much bandwidth, say, a hundred, two hundred, three hundred people would take? I don't know. I don't want to ask them because I don't want to raise their prices. <laughs> it's working for me. Go to webinar and go to meeting. We, we use both those products. They're actually great. Great products. Yeah, so you would suggest other things because I know sometimes folks want to put some type of training up on their website, some type of thing. Uh, if public speaker is probably a great, a great analogy here. Somebody says, hey, I've got a great training program. I want to put 15 minutes up, but I want to do like a webinar. In that case, to me, it seems like it would be better to just – design some type of video file instead of it being an actual webinar it's an actual video file that has all of your content in there you get to see the speaker speak all the, the content comes up in a PowerPoint template if you will or some type of of text and that information is given would you suggest that that would be the way to go that's as a opposed great to having somebody facilitate a live that's a great approach for volume you know if you want to if you want to communicate with thousands of people all, and without even having to be awake but um the nice thing about the live webinars is that you're always selling, right? The ultimate objective you're, you're of these things is to sell. And uh, during the webinar, you're, you'll hear the objections. You'll hear the opportunities, and you'll be able to respond instantly to those things and, and basically advance the relationship and the sale through the webinar. That's great. That's awesome. Well, let's, you know, link exchanges. I, I want to go back to link exchanges again. We talked about that in the beginning. As far as content is concerned, uh, we, we talked about a little bit about getting people from other from other websites, magazines, online magazines, even print magazines are always looking for new content. Yeah, and right there is another way. It would be an ideal way to get in if you've got some content for them. They're going to put your name, your email address, and your website at the bottom. Absolutely, link exchanges. It's a pretty actually broad category because you could also talk about the whole concept of affiliates. If you're an e-commerce site and you want other folks to have an opportunity to sell your products, you can go to affiliate networks and 
the affiliate networks are kind of interesting because there's two broad categories. There's massive, huge affiliate networks like Commission Junction, CJ.com. And then there is ShareASale. And ShareASale.com is really the place to go if you're a medium to small size company that wants to have your products sold through affiliates. And affiliates are basically, I like to think of them as mom and pop websites that sell stuff. And these mom and pop websites, maybe they want to sell candles. Well, they don't manufacture candles. They just want to sell them on the web. So they partner up with, with candle distribution companies and sell the candles for a commission. And companies like sharecell.com and, and commissionjunction.com track all of that and make sure the affiliates are paid, make sure everybody's paid and it, that the whole system works. Affiliate programs are a great way to do link exchanges. In addition to the content distribution we talked about and the partnerships, like you know, if you find someone that complements your business, all of those things are great. Portals are, are huge on the web. I mean, you can go to alexa.com and you can see what the most popular websites are right now, the top 100 in the U.S. They're loaded with portal and information sites. They're portal, community, and information websites. These websites exist in all types of, of vertical and horizontal markets. I think we've got what? We've got Google, Yahoo, MySpace, YouTube. I think those make up the top four. MSN, MSN you know, eBay. Yeah, the, the, so these are all places where content can be distributed, and they all have sub-websites that probably are in need of content in your area as an expert. So you know, you've got to pick up the phone and make a connection, and you've got to find out how it works to get content placed there. You know, um, the next subject of this podcast is uh, we're going to start talking about blogs and podcasts. Really, in a way, uh, it used to be that you'd create a website, and then you do the link exchange, you do the affiliate thing, you do the contract content distribution, you find your associations. Um, that's a little old-fashioned now because blogs have turned that whole model on its head. And really, the majority of the volume and the majority of the eyeballs on the web are coming through podcasts and blogs and RSS feeds and things like that. So uh, blogs have really turned that whole thing on its head. For Speaking of RSS, what can for our, our listeners, can you explain exactly what RSS is? It stands for Really Simple Syndication. And uh, in practice, what it is, is uh, a way to aggregate um, any subject area in all these cool different ways. So let's say you use the NetVibes uh, homepage, which is really cool. I recommend it. Um, you can put a page up there of all of the things that you're interested in, say, in the area of web marketing. And you can go to all these different blogs, and there's thousands of blogs devoted to web marketing, and you can create these little RSS portals, these little views that, that cover the entire web marketing landscape. So without uh, before RSS, that capability didn't exist. And now you see sites like Dig, which is a, a news uh, website where it's sort of a, a, a voting model. Uh, you see NetVibes, and in many of these blogs, you'll see articles, and next to the articles will be all these little tiny badges which things say things like dig it or add to net vibes. And those are all ways of getting creative with the RSS feeds and getting your stuff distributed out there. And particularly with dig, I've heard stories about websites being brought to their knees because one little article got out there and got real popular and millions of people came to that website within five minutes. You know? so, so the net so but an RSS feed, I mean if to just to translate it, it's basically getting the content you want automatically on your computer. Yeah, or your phone. You know, so yeah, or you find so it's basically it's getting content you want sent to you without you having to think about it. So you know the RSS feed, like what we're doing right now with this podcast on iTunes. People uh, subscribe to it. If you subscribe to it, it you get it. As soon as it's available, when it's available, boom, downloads on your computer. There it is. And that is what is happening with technology today. And and for the the real decision makers and the movers and the shakers that are coming up in business, this is what they're going to know and this is what they're going to use. So it's so important for you to have that value available for them. Uh, in these types of methods, blogs, podcasts, RSS feeds, and so forth. And, you know, the theme of this podcast really is becoming um, share your expertise and get it out there. And if you don't have a blog, uh, we'll put it in no uncertain terms. Get one. Start blogging tomorrow because you got something to say. If you have any kind of a service that you provide for your customers, you've got something to say. Start a blog right away. You know, let's uh, talk about blogs for just a quick moment here. Would you suggest that somebody go to, like, WordPress or one of those types of of sites to set it up or even uh, what I've seen a lot of people do is they will set up a separate website with a separate URL for their blog that's specifically set up that way. Is there any advantage to doing that? 
Well, I kind of advise people to keep their blogs on the same site as their website because all of the benefits in terms of search engine optimization would be one in, in that one spot. And with a blog, you're kind of starting from scratch. You probably already have some degree of placement with your existing website, and the blog would just add to that popularity. So I recommend that people keep their blogs on the same domain. Um, Having we, said that, we don't do that. <laughs> but, right, right. Well, but the so reason we don't do that, we got a, a domain, intuitiveblog.com, which is a cool domain. We have a lot of content there on our blog, and actually, you know, they all link back to one another, so that works well. And that's what I've seen a lot of people do, and they will actually do the the sponsored links through Google and affiliate programs in their blog that's not on their main website. That's their, their blog website, and they'll use mm -hmm. their blog website to generate affiliate revenue exactly. or pay-per-clicks or any of those things. If you if you were going to do that to, to utilize your blog to generate revenue, would you then suggest to split it off from your main website? That'd be one good reason to. Uh, with regard to your question about is the software any good, the WordPress, the the blogger, this stuff is all free and it all kicks butt. The software is fantastic and it helps you in so many different ways to to create a great blog that's going to get out there and get distributed. So. I, you know, there's no reason to not blog. And, you know, people don't understand blogs, but basically, you know how home pages have the tendency to become garbage dumps where every every department wants to add their little announcement on the bottom of the home page so Absolutely. the maximum number of people see it? Well, the blog is the perfect way to solve that problem. Tell all those people that want to make their little announcements, use the blog. The blogs are dynamic. That's what they're for. Yeah, absolutely. Well, then it comes to podcasts. I mean, obviously, that's what we're doing here. And another way to distribute content out on the web and, and distribute your expertise. Yeah, I think podcasts are great. And I've always said this is people can multitask. They can be doing something while they're listening to the podcast. They can be typing away and doing and checking email. But when they're listening to our podcast, they are focused. <laughs> we hope. That's all they are doing. They're, Taking notes. They're yeah. meditating upon the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Well, I mean, let's talk about building an online community. I know before the podcast began, we were kind of having this little conversation about building an online community. Let's bring it out to our listeners. Well, I think, you know, if you want to make a billion dollars on the web, that's the way to do it. And, uh, you know, say, hey, this is, we're going to give you an opportunity to connect with people. And, we're, and this is how that, that opportunity is going to come about. You're going like to place MySpace. videos or you're <laughs> going to do MySpace and you're going to put your crazy, you know, high school graduation photos or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. You can do this on your website. You can build a community. You can your customers can start talking to each other about common things that they're doing. Think about that. Think about how it can happen either through uh, uh, some type of, of of board process where people are posting comments, or through a blog, or or you know think outside the box and look at your marketplace. How can these folks start to talk to one another? Yeah. I think that's a that's a great way to look at it, and that once again goes back to. To, to looking at other types of things, reaching out to other sites and spreading spreading the love, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. And you look in your industry and and who else can be a part of your website to to build it as a community. Well, it's about establishing yourselves as an authority in a field, and um, if you can really gain that position, people will be coming to your site like droves. You'll get search engine placement. People look at you as the experts. And then once you're an expert, anybody that you have on your website is then viewed as an expert. And what you hope is the other people that you're networking with online will do the same thing for you. That's the whole point of, of building that community. And, and you know, you've, you've heard this term before, word of mouth. I mean, word of mouth makes or breaks most marketing efforts. And, uh, and what you want to do is leverage the Internet to be your word of mouth <laughs> because well, it's so easy. It's so easy to send a link. It's so easy to send someone to a website to get tons of content or information. But it also does have a downside, too. If somebody does not like your website or you've offended them somehow, word of mouth on the internet is dangerous. Yeah, and you yeah. can, you know, it's interesting though is is with statistical programs now, you can really track. <laughs> you could track word of mouth. You know, if people are leaving your site in, in you know, five or ten seconds and clicking off the home page in massive numbers, then word of mouth is not working probably. <laughs> and that's where Google Analytics will help you out. Absolutely. <laughs> Now, what about offline? I mean, there's obviously you have you still have print advertising. Print is still out there. Uh, you, you got billboards. You have all of those types of things that are, that are out there. Traditional media outlets that you can use that's offline to there drive traffic. Is. And that's probably for another podcast to get into that. But but here's the thing: the bottom line with everything that you do offline needs to be sending people to what's online to your website. So absolutely, and, and there are many, many companies out there whose most, most of their traffic comes from 
visitors that have seen ads offline. So definitely you have to coordinate your offline with what you're doing on your website. Or business cards. I can't stress enough how many business cards I see do not have a website on there. Oh, absolutely. They've got an email address. Great, but I want the website because a lot of times people have different emails. And then, and then the website. website doesn't have the address or the phone number. So it's like the, they're, not, they're not getting it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Not getting it. Well, we end each of the podcast with an action plan. Today's key action items are what, Tom and Dennis? <laughs> well, number one, and we, we keep saying this over and over again, is develop a plan for driving traffic outside of search engines and, and paid listings. Um, reach out to other websites and distribute your content. And what's so cool about reaching out to other websites is a lot of times they'll have an email link right there. So you could send them a quick email with a sample of your content very quickly. Um, make this an ongoing part of your internet marketing efforts. Uh, don't just stay isolated on search engines. Take some time to reach out to other websites and, and co-market. It's basically networking online, and it does work. I think uh, get somebody to do it or do it yourself. Just put an hour a week into this sort of stuff because people don't do it. It'll, months will go by, and people don't do it because they don't know how. It's too big. Uh, I'd say do a blog. Do it today. Get to know the web landscape for your industry and really find out where your target market is hanging out on the web and make sure you're hanging out the same place and use all the latest distribution methods, uh, RSS, DIG, things like that for getting the word out on your expertise. This has been an Intuitive Websites Internet Marketing Podcast. And for more information and to see all the available podcasts and much more, visit intuitivewebsites.com.